Philodendron varicosum is perhaps one of the most spectacular and diverse species in the aeroid family. Varicosums, or verus, have many different natural forms which are highly endemic to certain areas of the world. These hemiepiphytes, plants that spend only part of their life cycle in the canopy, are native to Central and South America, like most other fillows. Though most people will tell you caring for a veru isn't like caring for a typical fillow. Fillows are highly opportunistic growers. They crawl and climb and search the forest for that perfect growing spot where they can flourish. Which means that many fillows are able to adapt well to our dark and dry homes. That being said, there are some outliers when it comes to hardiness, and Verus probably reign as king. Many will buy this plant the moment they set eyes on it, and I don't blame them. Their emerald-colored leaves are a delicate satin, with their undersides flaunting beautiful color patterns, ranging from markings of burgundy and purple to being completely painted crimson red. Scales on their stems that look like little hairs make them even more intriguing. And all these characteristics tell you that this plant is a fussy little c All right, let me break it down. Every feature has a function. The velvet leaves are designed to facilitate more efficient shedding of rainwater to prevent fungal growth. Warm colors under the leaves help the plant absorb more light in deeply shaded environments. And those hairy stems absorb additional moisture from the humid air and even act as a barricade to protect the paper-thin leaves from pests that will try to crawl up their stem. These are all signs that this species is not going to be as easygoing as your heteraceum cultivars like Mykins or Brazil. Now, before you get too intimidated by all this, I'm here to tell you that there is a way to successfully grow your verus. Bus free! And no, it doesn't involve throwing them in an ugly grow tent or sticking them into a terrarium. These hacks I've learned over the years have allowed me to grow several different forms of verus right in my living room. And while their leaves can get as big as three feet across when they're climbing, I personally enjoy letting them trail, which keeps their leaves about the size of my palm. But regardless of how you want to grow your veru, this video will still apply. This will not be a general care video. This is a care hack video that might involve methods you haven't tried before. And that's the exciting part. Let's experiment with our plants, people. Okay, let's get into the goods. If you've grown verus, then you probably are familiar with leaf crisping. This happens when their very thin roots dry out. They are extremely sensitive to water loss. Perpetual moisture is key. Now for those living in humid environments, this plant can absorb additional moisture from the air and won't dry out quite as often. But I live in the Northeast, where my plants have to grow in 30% humidity all winter long. And all I can say is, they thrive. The secret is in the roots. Only the roots require a humid environment. Traditional pots with drainage holes or ones made of porous terracotta will let the roots dry out way too fast, and it will dry out in uneven patches. Maybe the top of the medium feels dry, but the bottom is still wet. So the roots at the bottom are okay, but the roots at the top have dried out and died. Then you go to water again, and those dried roots rot away and introduce root rot to your plant. It's not worth it, guys. There's a better way to maintain those finicky roots, and that is in no drainage vessels. Yup, you heard me. Plant the roots in a substrate that is both moisture retentive and aerated, like sphagnum moss. At a false bottom, using a free draining moisture wicking medium, like leca, perlite, lava rocks, pawn, or fluval stratum. Water right before the moss on top dries out. When you water, do so slowly and evenly so the moss has time to absorb the water like a sponge. Then stop when you start to see water collect at the bottom. This is where the false bottom comes into play. A little bit of water can sit on the bottom of the vessel, which will be wicked up through capillary action over the next several days, keeping the moss hydrated longer. So before I go away for a week, I'll just water the plants until the reservoir nearly fills the false bottom. But as the roots grow, some will grow down into the false bottom, and it is perfectly fine for these to sit in water for short periods of time. They're essentially semi-hydroponic water roots. All in all, this no-drainage method encloses a humid microclimate around the root system, and that keeps the plant happy. I also fertilize with every watering, but pretty much any fertilizing method works. Just be sure it's diluted properly to avoid burning those leaves. 
The other major problem we all face when growing Verus is the fact that they are pest magnets, particularly when it comes to spider mites. Mites love to chow down on those thin, delicate leaves. And many insecticides will not work on mites because they're arachnids, not insects. Some even make them more fertile, if you can imagine that. So I use horticultural oil about once every four to six weeks. I lay the plant down in the bathtub and spray the entire thing down. Even if I don't see any pests, I'll make it rain, honey. If you have pests other than mites, you'll need to use a systemic that labels that particular pest. Don't just grab the first thing you see off the shelf. Make sure it will work. Unfortunately, I don't know of a commercial systemic for mites, which is a bummer because spraying down your plants with smelly oil and water every few weeks isn't ideal. Now, sometimes even after treating my verus, I notice a few days later that mites have still found their way to it via nearby plants. Mites will make their way from one plant to the next if they're touching. So a very simple and incredibly effective way to keep your veru mite free is to isolate it. Display it somewhere where it's not in close proximity to other plants that mites may be crawling on. Because listen, I always see a couple mites crawling on my anthuriums. But anthurium leaves are overall much thicker and more resilient than phyllo leaves. So all you need is a plant with a few little mites on it to find your varro and boom! They create a full-blown metropolis underneath your plant's leaves. But isolation fixes all of this. Okay, quick recap. A no-drainage vessel with sphagnum moss and a one-inch false bottom of leca, perlite, lava rocks, pond, or fluval stratum. Keep moss perpetually moist to keep the roots hydrated. Spray generously with horticultural oil that lists spider mites on the label, whether you see pests or not. And repeat applications according to the instructions. And keep your vero away from other plants to prevent pests from plant hopping. Oh, last thing. For the love of all plants, don't help an emerging leaf out of its catafil. Spray it down to lubricate it and it will pop right out on its own. And that's pretty much it, guys. For more general care tips on phyllos, check out my rare philodendron care video using the link below. If you enjoyed this video, please interact with it. Let me know in the comments if these care hacks work for you. And thank you if you're subscribed to Plant Gay for Life. Did you know I also have a music channel? Making music is my first passion. Use the link in the description or just search Jake in Zara. All right, I'm off to go make a mess. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.